getting down with the devil. Here's your spooky spar on the Funko, Paka Paka, Boo Hollow, Phineas and Scratch. Funko and Boo Hollow are excited to bring you Phineas and Scratch, the latest figure to the Paka Paka series. Phineas and Scratch are live from Boo Hollow Cemetery, where the ghosts love to dance and the spooky tunes cheer up the tombstones. Spending some time in the spooky cemetery as we have a look at another Boo Hollow vinyl figure. In this case, we actually are getting two, Phineas and Scratch, with a tiny little ghost in the middle. Grabbing now the tape measure just to see how tall they stand. I think it'd be safe to say that Phineas and Scratch are the same in size, maybe? Maybe we'll even say that Phineas is just a tad bit taller. Taking it right to the very top of Phineas's head, the figure stands about 4 inches in height, or roughly about 10 centimeters tall. I just realized how much of my hairy arm was covering that shot. Apologies for anybody that doesn't like the sight of a hairy man's arm. Anyways, though, I'm going to bring my hairy arm in again just to slide over Phineas and Scratch to free up a little bit of space to bring back in Nina and Lucky, a figure set we already had a look at. Uh, not the colors of the black as much here with Phineas and Scratch, but you can see a lot of the same design elements get carried over from one to the other. Did I already disclose why I'm such a fan of the Boo Hollow vinyl figures from Funko? I know normally I'm not the Funko guy. You know that by now. If you were to come into my collection room one of these days, I will invite you guys all over, by the way. We can make up grilled cheese sandwiches. You can walk around, though if you have buttery fingers, please don't touch my stuff. But you would notice, though, in my collection room, there's very few and far between Funko Pops. I'm not the guy that has an entire wall of sealed Funko Pops. I'm not that guy. But one of the reasons why I like the Funko Boo Hollow file figures so much is because it again reminds me of those 80s decorations I used to put up in my house. I think they were made by the Beasel Company. Some of you may or may not be familiar of those. But then, well, anyways, between the colors and the way they've actually designed these characters, I very much feel like I'm looking at the old Beasel decorations. Anyways, let's get a closer look at Phineas and Scratch. And based on the packaging, I would have safe to assume that this is Phineas and this is Scratch. Phineas is one I'm guessing to be a werewolf. Scratch seems to be Satan or the devil. Let's go ahead and pick them up right now. First of all, it's safe to say that this is also fall. It's also safe to say that the grass seems quite dead too. <laughs> Somebody needed to water this grass as the grass has gone all yellow. Though sprinkled amongst the grass, or what's left of it, you can actually see there's a couple of little fall leaves. So we know right away it's fall. There's actually a couple of cute little fall leaves that have found their way settling on the side of the tombstones, who don't seem all that bothered by it either. They're listening in on the tunes, and not bothering it at all really by the fact that there's leaves, or even the fact that they're sitting on top of them. Both of the tombstones, as you can see, are slightly different from one another. One has a skull with wings. The other one actually has R.I.P., doesn't say the names of who's actually in the ground be below them, but at least we know that they're tombstones and there's likely bodies buried down below here. This is, by the way, a hollow piece of a solid piece of plastic. It's hollow in the sense that I don't think it's it's completely solid. You can kind of actually see where this is like the bottom that's been added to the top piece, but at least it's not hollow, at least where you're looking at the bottom and you see like an open cavity. They've actually finished it completely on the bottom. I know it's really the strangest place to be looking at this. This is not the way you're going to be displaying this, but it also does say Funko down below. And it also gives you the website there as well. I, look, I do like the coloring, though, of the tombstones. A nice light gray. And again, you've got that kind of crescent moon-shaped eye. Still looks like a Funko Pop, really, because like Funko Pops always have those circular eyes. But in this case, they've actually added these little crescent colors on the sides. In this case, you've got orange with the yellow there on the side. Really nice looking little, cute little tombstones. Now, based on the packaging, in the middle here, we have a ghost. And the ghost seems quite taken back by the music that he's listening to. On the back, it actually says, Ori loves to dance. Now, being the fact that both Phineas and Scratch, we already know their names, and they're already sitting and they're playing some instruments, we know neither one of them are dancing. So I think in the middle, the ghost is named Ori. You can see tiny little Ori there. Ori's a cute little chap. Probably was cute at one point before he sadly died. But at least as a ghost, he certainly is enjoying at least the music that's being played in front of him. 
The colors, again, you've got the circular shapes for the Funko Pop eyes, so that's still there, but again, you've got the little crescent moons of yellow, little tiny smiley face. And one thing I've also noticed a lot with the Boo Hollow figures, at least from the two we've looked at so far, is they add a lot of dotted lines here. So when we spin this around, and it's finished, by the way, on all the sides, also, you got this cool little dotted effect, dotted line effect that they've got on the ghost. I like also that they've got the ghost lifted. Now, you can see there's a post inside of that, so the ghost is sitting on top of it. Uh, there isn't, I thought there may have been some possibility where you'd be able to move this around, but Phineas is a permanent piece. You can't move him, her, you can't move the ghost around. And of course, on the top, we've got Phineas the werewolf, judging by at least the fact he's got fangs. It also looks like he's got a wolf nose. And he's got the dotted lines there all across his face. He's also got it on there, his ears as well. Now, both of these figures of Phineas and Scratch do actually have head articulation. So you can move them back and forth. Scratch, unfortunately, is though a little more limited because there's a bow so close to the bottom of his face that when you're moving it back and forth, I can almost feel, I mean, obviously one thing too, that the ears are going to be hitting one another. But I also kind of feel like the face is rubbing against the bow. I don't want to really chip. I'm guessing the bow would likely be painted. Bow, by the way, is this piece right here that goes along with the fiddle. He's a fiddler from, from hell. Anyways, the head does rotate back and forth, but I do kind of feel like it's rubbing against the bow, so I'm not going to move it back and forth too much. Uh, of the two, I actually can't, I, I kind of think I like Phineas just a little bit more. The idea of a werewolf wearing plaid, first of all, I think is su such a fun idea. And then to throw in a banjo. This werewolf is playing a banjo in the cemetery with the devil. I'm done. That's all I needed to say. The coloring on this one actually is quite good. Uh, it kind of really looks like this, uh, kind of like a candy corn. I mean, with the colors of candy corn being like the orange, the yellow, and the white, I get very much like the colors of candy corn here with both Phineas and Scratch. Again, I love the colorings of the face, mostly here molded in the orange plastic, but just a lot of fun personality going here for Phineas. You can see he's playing the banjo. Would you, would you need a pick for a banjo? Or can you just string them with your fingers? I'm asking a banjo player expert out there. Somebody let me know. Do you need actually a pick to play a banjo? But anyways, though, you can spin this around. You can see it's a nicely painted piece. There's the plaid shirt right there. Tiny little tail sticking out. So he's clearly a, a wolf of some sorts. And his tiny little feet. Look at these adorable little feet on Phineas. Then on the flip end of it, we've got, of course, a Scratch or Satan or Devil, if you just prefer to call him Devil here on the side. The Devil is in the details, so of course you've got the little horns sticking out there, the Widow's Peak hair, and I've got the little dotted eyes there as well. This one also is sporting a dotted mustache. How adorable is that? Tiny little lines there representing his cheeks, pointed little ears, and this one actually is wearing an orange suit, top and bottoms match. Again, you got the little dotted line effect that they've added there. I love the idea that they've also painted the, the fiddle and the bow a bright yellow. So it really does stand out because there's so much orange more happening on Scratch than there is on Phineas. You really need a lot of extra color added in there. In fact, actually, the only parts that really are black in both the cases here, black in the pants, of course, for Phineas, black in the shoes here for Scratch. And then really, other than that, it's just the detailing that they've added to the face. And of course, the Widow's Peak there as well. And like I said, he already has head articulation, but just by how close in quarters they are, you're going to be always banging the ears against one another. And I feel again, like it's going to be rubbing against the bow. So I'm not going to be wanting to do that too much. I really like this set, sort of the two for the price of one. This, at least you get two figures. Although really, I guess if you can consider them, I'm going to just slide them over just a little bit so we can bring back in Nina. They are slightly smaller in size than Nina, but I think I paid around the same price point for both of these. And again, being that they have two different types of colors used, still has a very much that Beetle color scheme. Beetle was always known for kind of using a lot of blacks, oranges, and yellows. And both of the cases here of, of Nina and Lucky that we've already looked at in the earlier review, and now Phineas and Scratch, they're bringing back a lot of those classic 80s decoration colors. The black, the orange, and the yellow, which happens to also be, of course, the colors of Halloween too. So a werewolf and the devil walk into a cemetery. Actually sounds like I'm starting the beginning of a joke. But what's not a joke, though, is in this set, at least, of Phineas and Scratch, you're actually getting two figures for the price of one. Technically three, really, if you consider Ori the ghost. Ori's kind of more of a decoration. Even though she's a tiny little character, there's no possibility at all for Ori. I thought that the post maybe inside the ghost would allow the ghost to actually move back and forth, but no. Ori is staction. It's part of the environment. But though, what's neat about this set is that both Ori and Scratch do have head possibility. Traditionally, what you would expect with Funko Pops by now. And of course, you've got the diorama going along with that as well. Most Funko Pops tend not to have the diorama and would also probably explain why these are also slightly smaller than a traditional Funko Pop because of course you got two characters three with Gory and then of course you got the tombstones you got the whole dead yellow grass I mean at least it evokes the colors and kind of feel of fall and it kind of also has the colors of candy corn there too 
And even if they were playing really lousy music, a fiddler and a banjoist. Is a banjoist somebody that plays a banjo? I don't know. Either way, though, generally when you have a fiddler that's trained and plays well with somebody who actually knows how to play a banjo, you can get yourself some pretty fun music happening. A hoedown, if you will. And even really if the music was lousy anyways. The tombstones that are having a good time, it's not like they could really get up and leave anyways if the music was bad. I really do like this set quite a lot. Not only just the colors, the detailing that they put to both of the figures, like the, that simplicity, the fun that went along with like those old 80s decorations. I get kind of that same vibe once again done here in vinyl. What do you guys think of Phineas and Scratch? Let me know down below in the comments section. And again, if you guys are interested and would like to get this set for yourself, I picked this one up over at Entertainment Earth, to which I can provide the link down below if you guys are interested to pick up a set for yourself. By the way, just a side question. I'm just out of more curiosity than anything else. Anyone in the comments, let me know. Can you either play the banjo or can you play the fiddle? Or a violin. I guess it would be a fiddler. Somebody that gets down to a, low, a hoedown, I probably would imagine would be playing a fiddle, not a violin. Is there a difference between a fiddle and a violin? Let me know down below in the comments section. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about instruments in the comments sections, apparently. But also, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing, and yes, yes, do want to stick around for more. Because we are going to be looking at more spooky spots for the rest of Spottober. Then make sure you do the crucial things of hitting the subscribe button down below, turning on the bell notification, and hamp helping yourself to the big bowl of candy corn I've had out this whole time. And actually, I've only noticed a few people actually going over and grabbing a small handful. Help yourself. I bought a big economy pack of candy corn. If you're not going to eat it, I'm going to have to just throw it out because that's way too much candy corn for even me to consume. Please help yourself. Fill your pockets with as much candy corn as you can. As certainly we are going to be having a look at some other spooktacular reviews coming your way for the rest of this month. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.